Hey guys, in this video we are going to talk about the difference between positions and interests and why it's so valuable to keep this distinction in mind when you're involved in a negotiation. I want that orange. Well, I want that orange. Okay, okay. I know what we've got to do. Oh yeah? What's that? Whoa! Whoa, 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 whoa. No, 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 no. I just want to cut the orange in half. Okay. Well, I seem to have gotten what I wanted. <laughs> Sayonara, loser. Hey guys, in case you're new here, my name is Hayden Richards and I am an emergency physician. And this is Coslab. On this channel, I share my journey and what I've learned as I strive to develop myself into an effective communicator and an emotionally intelligent leader. The content for this video is largely derived from the book Getting to Yes by Roger Fisher and William Urey. Fisher and Urey even use this very specific orange situation as an example to demonstrate the difference between positions and interests. Let's take a look at positions first. The negotiations literature tells us that positions are surface statements of where a person stands. For example, I want that orange. Well, I want that orange. In the scenario we've just witnessed, both parties were very clear about their position and they stuck to their positions. As a result, they were left in a situation where they were forced to choose between a winner takes all outcome versus a case of splitting the difference or splitting the orange to be more accurate. Okay, let's talk about interests now. Interests are the reasons and motivations behind those positions. Let's just imagine what would have happened if even one of the participants had shown some curiosity for the other's interests. Hang on a sec. Can I just check something with you? Sure. This might seem like a silly question, but do you mind if I ask, what do you want the orange for? Oh, I just need the, the peel to, to put in my super duper orange cake mix. Well, that's interesting because I actually don't need the peel. I, I just want the juice for a tasty, refreshing snack. Oh, really? Well, then I guess it makes sense for us to get the juice out first, and then I can take the peel and I can use that in the cake mix. Now, in this case, by focusing on the interests, the result was that both parties were able to double their respective outcomes from the negotiation, which is actually a pretty big argument against the idea of splitting the difference. Okay, for those of you who have made it this far through the video, which is essentially just a film of me negotiating with myself over an orange. I wanted to give you a little bonus. Let's take a closer look at the question that changed the whole course of this conversation. This might seem like a silly question, but do you mind if I ask, what do you want the orange for? Notice the deferential tone here and the use of the word what. Now I've taken a leaf out of Chris Voss's book here. The thing is, the question could equally have been, why do you want the orange? But Chris actually warns against using the word why. He says that in his experience as a hostage negotiator, the word why is much more likely to trigger defensiveness than if you start your open questions with either a what or a how. Now Chris bases this advice on literally decades of experience of dealing with terrorists. And even though I don't have any empirical evidence to back this up, it actually does match my experience very closely. Okay, so now that we've grasped the distinction between positions and interests, how do we leverage that understanding to reframe our roles from adversaries to partners? That's what we're gonna talk about in the next video. Thanks for watching, and I will see you there.